What's going on guys and welcome back. I'm up here at Southside Sales and Service and we're going to talk about a family of sleds in the Polaris lineup that we really don't talk about a ton. We've touched on them here and there, but we don't really go into them and that is the XC family. So some of you may be like, well, what is an XC? An XC is an entry level sled that is the exact same chassis as what, you know, the VR1s and your XCRs and your assaults are. They just have, you know, um, components on it that keep the cost down. So if you are someone that's looking to get into the sport, this is the sled that you are going to want to look at. And Bruce and I are going to go over kind of what makes them an XC and what is different between, you know, a VR1, an XC, an Assault, and an XC. And uh, the XC has 129, 137, and 146. So you have exactly all the trail lineup that we have in the the, the more higher up models, just in, a, in an entry level model. So here we have in order a 129 a 137 and a 146 and we have the man the myth the legend bruce to tell us about kind of what makes an xc an xc hey guys uh, well as we talked about with some of the other models and how similar that they are through the through the lineup this is the this is the start of that lineup chassis is the same you know bulkhead tunnel strength of all those things the braking the drive line the clutches all those things are the same. Obviously the engine options are the same. It's just a matter of uh, shock package, which is you know a big deal well, that uh, we, we always talk about it. Um, gauge packages and certain things in the rear suspension. So we go, um, you know, these models a lot of times are, are things that are on, on the floor at the dealership. So you come in and you're looking for a sled and, and the snow check stuff is gone. You know, we've, we've been a lot of ups and downs these last couple of years with all the COVID stuff. But in reality, the snow check stuff is supposed to go. And then when you're coming and looking in the fall, you know, a, a new guy, this is what you're, or gal, you're going to find on the showroom floor. So when we purchase these, a lot of times they're configured where we have the 1.35 track, which is the very common track that we have on all of the premium models also. And then on a, on a 146, you might have the 1.6 on it, which at least gives you a little bit more <clears throat> dig for, you know, using that crossover type snowmobile. But <clears throat> the, the main thing is, is that you're getting the same quality that you would get in all those steps up. It's just a matter of it's just taking off the edge of some of the things that some people just don't need when they're starting out in this. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of which being uh, a gauge. Commonly, these units come with a gauge that we've used now for 10 years. It's a good gauge. You know, it gives you all the attempts and the RPMs and the speed and the maxes and the mins. And, and the so, mileage. And yeah, it gives you all the things you need. And your fuel gauge is all electronic still. And because now, obviously, we have that 7S display, which has been very well received and, you know, really good maps and all that. And that can go on this if you're snow checking one of these, which you can snow check one, you can purchase the 7S so that it's in it when you get it. Or afterwards, if you buy it off the floor, we put it in. So but that is a $1,200 option. $1,200 option. Yep. Uh, the next thing is suspension. You know, this, we've talked about these before because we talk about suspension a lot. These use the Fox shocks, which is the QS3. Gives you three positions. One, two, three. That's it. No fooling so around, soft, no counting. You, that's it. Yeah, you have soft, medium, hard. Right. When you, we had said before, all four of these shocks have the same, have the same positioning uh, adjustment. So you have, you know, one, and then two is considered twenty percent. So the high speed is twenty percent stiffer, and then when you go to three, it's eighty percent. So literally, it just about locks it out. So with that being said. The nice thing about that is like last night we went riding and the snow was super soft. It is bottomless. You know, we had that three feet of snow this week. That kind of thing, that quick adjustment of just cranking everything up is a biggie because the snow wants to swallow the sled up and it just, you know, it feels real wishy-washy because the snow is moving and then the suspension's moving. Sort of like RMKs, they have that stuff stiff. So when the snow is moving, the snowmobile isn't. Well, that's easy to do with this. Click it up number three, 
and going. It, it, yeah. it worked yeah, you had awesome. Me, yeah, you had me, Bruce, and Scotty last night all underneath our sleds going one, two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven, yeah. eight, nine, ten. Yeah. On these, you have three options. That's it. Yeah, and and we would have went <coughs> we would have went to number three. Yeah, immediately and, and been done. So, yeah. But, yeah, just like Bruce said, you have that those three clickers on all four shocks. So you have your rear shock, your front track shock, center shock, as you want to call it, and your two fronts. Yeah. So very, very easy to adjust. Yeah, and then your... And in the rear on this, the one thing that you do lose is the um, rail stiffener, which on an Assault or VR1 or XCR, we always have that stiffening piece. Right, which goes, you know, it's probably an eight inch piece that goes from there to there. Yeah, I got one, I got one up here. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. So this is, this is the rail here. So there's your stiffener mounted in just to keep that low area stronger for heavier use. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that, uh, so that's the only real difference under there with that suspension. The other thing is spring options, the same spring options that we always talk about, the, the, the normal that it comes with, standard uh, HD, XHD, or that new trap spring, which is a heavier duty spring yet. Yeah, those can all be put on this because it is, it is the same rear at, that we've been dealing with with these VR1s and XCRs. XCR has a little bit more heavy duty stuff in between, but the the operation and the geometry is the same right and that's i mean we're just when we we talk about all those springs that is just 129 like you have here on my right and a 137 right. once you get into the 146 which is really a twin and of assault you know they take their own spring so you can't take uh you can't order a heavy duty spring for a 129 or a 137 and expect it to work on a 146 it's right. not going to work they are different right. but just like bruce said you also don't get the rail stiffener on the 146 either right it um, now that suspension that's under this is I and mean, we have a there's a lot of assault people that's for sure and this unit is is used just like it's supposed to be crossover people they use it in the the um, off trail or they use it on the trail uh, the the spring that comes on this is kind of the middle of the spring so when you put when you got this snowmobile it has the middle spring and then you can you know, go lighter or heavier whereas on these like I stated they come with standard and you got everything up from there actually i think there is one softer there is never, yeah there is a light duty i've never used one but yes there <laughs> is one um so the one thing with an assault which changes from these is these are soft and plushy to you know to go down the trail and soak that up the complaint or the or the statement that is made by people a lot is this sled is is stiffer and now those first movements are, are take a lot to make it move. And that is inherent of an assault or any 146 because what they've done is they've made it so this sled doesn't conform to the small bumps quickly because they have it set up so it's stiffer right off the bat. So if you dive off into the powder with this, the track stays out so it wants to trench and you can get off in that snow that you want to get them. You go off in the snow with one of these, this stuff is very good in the deep snow now but this suspension is gonna move up and try to conform over the top of the snow and get itself tucked up in the tunnel a little bit, which isn't good for when you wanna get out. Right. That snowmobile, that, you go through that powder, that suspension stays out. It's not getting pushed by that soft snow. But when you're going down a, a packed trail, it keep, all of a sudden you feel all those little edgy and bumps and stuff like that. And that is how that is made. It, to, I can adjust to that. We can. You know soften that and make it the opposite like one of these where it's stiffer on the hard hit and softer on the small hit it's just that i'm stating that because i've talked to a lot of people this this winter about that complaint or why is that like that well that is why that is like that mm -hmm. but aside from really suspension gauge a rail stiffener i mean you're getting exactly what a vr1 an xcr a an assault is you know i mean it's the same it's the same front end it's there you're not getting skimped anywhere anywhere but you know the couple things that we mentioned and again it's not really skimping it's just it's it's keeping the cost down for an entry level guy for a new rider yeah. to get in <clears throat> try the sport out and see if they like it and we've had guys that prefer these fox stuff over you know the velocities that we have on our other sides yeah they uh you know that simple simplicity of the one two three they do like and the fox stuff is certainly good quality i mean walker is very good so is fox it's just 
Fox has the job of making these types of shocks. Walker has all the rest mm -hmm. of the job. Yeah, but the sleds, I mean, you could add the bags just like a VR1 and or an XER and an assault. It's all the same. It's the same exact tunnel. It's the same. You could add all the same accessories. You have the same storage underneath the seats that we always have, which I can open that one up. So that's it, guys. That's the XC family. And uh, great buggies. Awesome to, you know, kind of get your feet wet into the sport and see if you like it. <clears throat> and I um, just want to remind that if it is something that somebody snow checks, which people snow check XCs all the time, you do have options of track. You have uh, pre stud, inch and a quarter, the inch and three eighths that are on these or the Storm 1.5, mm -hmm. which is 1.5 in the center, 1.25 on the outsides. Very good track. Um, most things, when they come onto the floor, when we purchase them for that, commonly it has that 1.3 or the 1.6. But if it's no check, you can get those options. You can also get options of color, too, if you do it that way. And then, um, or the 7S already put in. Right. So those are the differences you could do if you, if you did snow check it and didn't buy it off the floor. Mm-hmm. But that, again, is the XC family, guys. Uh, I hope that kind of clarifies the difference between an XC family and a, and a VR1 or an XCR and Assault. Um, I see the questions kind of all the time. It's like, well, what's the difference? You know, why is it this and that? Well, there it is, guys. So, But that is going to do it for this video. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. And if you need anything sled-related, you can call Southside Shop. You could ask for Bruce. He'll be happy to help you, or he'll get you in touch with someone that does. If you have any questions about the video, put it down below, and I will get back to you guys. But thank you. Talk to you guys soon.